The PS2 has the largest console library of any system, over 4,000 games. We all know about Grand Theft Auto and Metal Gear, but there's so many awesome games we don't really know about. Today, I want to tell you about one of my favorites. But don't take my word for it, even Jeff Keighley wants a sequel. Today, let's take a look at War of the Monsters. The game starts and right away, the main menu is this drive-in movie theater. It's awesome. It really puts you into the headspace of retro future that the game's going for. Even the options are a concession stand. Compare this to modern AAA games where you got these ugly, bland menus. Give us your email, give us your money, and a welcome screen? Okay. Did I just check into a hotel? Can you imagine a Ubisoft hotel? Probably gotta climb up to your room. I'd jump off the top floor. Anyway, this game's doing it right. The manual's great too, but we'll check that later. We start up the campaign by choosing our monster. You got 10 in total, but two are locked. The gang's all here. We got King Kong, Godzilla, a Prey Mantis. The game's broken up into stages, and each one gives you these fun little cutscenes. It even includes the character you chose. First up is Donkey Kong. You got light and heavy attacks, grabs and throws, and specials you can use when your red bar fills up. If you complete a combo, it'll always send the other guy flying. You can also smash enemies into the environment like this building. So sometimes buildings will crash down, killing the other guy, giving you an instant win. Next is a battle against Godzilla in Las Vegas. I say Godzilla, but the game was developed by the Twisted Metal guys, minus David Jaffe. Toho, the rights holders of Godzilla, offered them the IP, but they turned it down because Toho demanded they make the monsters bigger. I don't think that would fit with the game design though. Godzilla is too big. He doesn't climb up buildings or throw cars around. There were some Godzilla games at the time of this game's release, but they weren't too good. So none of the monsters here are their actual movie counterparts, but I think that's for the best. After beating this guy, the American military swoops in with a robot that looks straight at a fallout. The planes and tanks shooting at you do a surprising amount of damage. Next up, Area 51. Quiz time! What kind of monster do you think we'll face at Area 51? Aliens? A secret government robot, maybe? Nope. Ants. They, they are pretty big, to be fair. Defeat enough of them, and the actual boss battle begins. A big government robot. He'll throw bombs at you, and you can pick them up off the ground since they're timed. Or, if you time it right, you can actually just grab them right out of the air. After that phase, he'll come down to meet you. Just gotta keep your distance and shoot him. Every monster in the game has a weak ranged attack, but it uses your energy, which you can see on the left side of the screen. This is the same energy that's used for your specials. Do enough damage, and he'll start charging and spinning. You can get on top of the rocks for protection, but he chips away at them over time. Anyway, time for something more exciting. I want to talk about loading screens. There are these mock-ups reminiscent of old movie posters. Left 4 Dead did the same thing years later. It just helps convey the game's tone. You can tell the developers really cared. There's so much love and attention. Speaking of, the manual. Yeah, I know first loading screens and now the manual, but trust me, they're so good. The first page is full of background lore. The game's story isn't in the actual video game, but is instead told in the instruction manual. At least the background info is. It's giving you context as to why you're fighting. It started as an alien invasion. In humanity's darkest hour, they unleashed these new pulse emitters, which destroyed most of the alien fleet. But the alien fuel sources leaked all around the world, infecting all manner of beasts. So now everything's all messed up. It's a cool premise. I wish there was some story in the game, but it's neat to see it at least in the booklet. Later into the campaign, we're at this radioactive power plant, and I just super don't like this stuff. Everything has this green hue, which I get. It fits the game's theme, but it's just ugly. The enemy design is bad too. Electric floating eyeballs. Maybe there's someone out there who likes this stuff, but I find it boring and uninspired. The level ends with the power plant having a nuclear meltdown, and time to fight a Venus flytrap? A prey mantis, ants, and now a plant? Am I in a garden? Makes me want to go play Sim Ant. 
Now that's a video game. The top three best gardening video games, Viva Pinata, Simant, and War of the Monsters. I don't want to talk about this boss battle. You avoid his little roots that come out of the ground to hit you, avoid his ranged attacks, then throw some rubble into one of his three mouths. It's super annoying because you're spending like 90% of the fight just waiting for him to open his mouth. You can't hurt him otherwise. It takes so long. There's no environment to interact with either, so it just removes the main thing that makes War of the Monsters fun, destroying shit. It would be like if Rampage was a 2D fighting game with no people to eat or no buildings to destroy. Why would you play that? Thankfully, it's just that boss battle, right after and we're back into the city. This time, it's like San Francisco with its steeped streets. The game reuses some of the monsters it introduced earlier, but it'll always change it up somehow. Maybe there's two of them this time. Maybe they're accompanied by tanks. Stuff like that. One of my favorite levels later on is this Japanese city, fighting against these super sophisticated Japanese robots. They're a stark contrast to the American robots that are also big, but bulky and slow. What I don't like is being abducted by aliens and fighting on their mothership. There's not really a city here to destroy, and you're up against three guys at once. And you have these obnoxious little ships flying around shooting you, and these turrets doing the same. It's so annoying! Speaking of things I hate, too often these assholes will run away for health pickups spread around the map. Self-preservation can be good in games, but here it's just annoying. After crashing back down to Earth, more specifically the US capital, it's time to beat the Alien King. King Alien? Alien? Boss? I don't know. The leader guy. First, you beat him in his big robot suit. Then, you fight him in a smaller Doc Ock suit. And last, you fight him in his birthday suit. Then his head explodes and a smaller alien runs out. I can't explain it. After beating the campaign, you'll get a cutscene showing the origin of your chosen character. It's a lot like a fighting game in that regard. It's done in this super cheesy 1950s style again. I love it. The campaign may be over, but you still got unlockable levels, unlockable characters, one's a dragon who can fly, that's cool, and you got mini games and some split screen fun. There's a lot here, which is why War of the Monsters is one of the best hidden gems on the PS2.